Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video because it was actually inspired by one of my lovely Instagram followers. You reached out to me on DM and you said that you were in the market for your very first luxury investment and you wanted me to create a video suggesting my top luxury investments for every budget. So that's exactly what today's video is going to be about. I gathered a bunch of items and I categorized them based on price ranging from $500 all the way up until $10,000 to cover all kinds of budgets. I didn't go beyond $10,000 because then we would be here all day, but I tried to cover as much ground as I possibly could. And I also wanted to mention that when I think about an investment piece, there are a lot of other factors that I consider aside from just brand and style. I also consider versatility, quality, and I also consider how that item is going to increase or decrease in value over time. So those are the parameters that I'm kind of going off of by. And before I hop into the video, I quickly wanted to share my personal experience with my first luxury designer item. I wouldn't call it an investment, piece because this particular item ended up decreasing in value over time and I no longer have it because I did end up selling it. So about 10 years ago when I was in the market for my very first luxury designer item and I wanted to wet my beak into the luxury designer market if you will with a handbag first and I did not do a lot of research if I'm honest on what kind of a handbag I wanted. It was kind of like a spur of the moment thing. I was just browsing around doing some window shopping and spotted a handbag that I absolutely fell in love with ended up purchasing it and the rest is history. So the handbag that I ended up purchasing was a small Prada Safiano leather Galleria bag in this gorgeous turquoise color. I just love this color so much. I really did not think about wearability and longevity and all of these things. And it was really an irrational purchase. And I really, really wish that I thought through this purchase a lot more than I did. Don't get me wrong, I did get a lot of wear out of it because I kind of forced myself to wear this handbag as much as I possibly could because it wasn't cheap. I did like the overall construction of the bag. I just found that the color itself was really, really difficult to style. So for this reason, I did eventually decide to part with it because I just felt like I would be able to use that money towards something else that I would be able Able to get a lot more wear out of, which is exactly what I did. And now, of course, when I'm thinking about purchasing a luxury designer good, I always think through my purchase very, very carefully and really think if this is something that I will be able to wear a lot and use a lot and really get the most out of it. All right, so like I mentioned, I've categorized these luxury designer items anywhere from $500 to $10,000, assuming that you're gonna pay retail price for these items. But I wanted to share a couple of hacks with you on how you can actually get these items for much, much less and avoid paying retail. So my first way of doing this is shopping pre-loved. I've talked about shopping pre-loved in many, many of my videos, and I have so many luxury designer items that are investment pieces and I did not pay retail for them. So one of my personal ways of doing that is shopping through pre-loved luxury retailers such as The Real Real. I honestly can't really vouch for other ones. I know there are so many other luxury consignment retailers such as Vestiaire Collective and Fashion File, but I have never had an experience with them. I've only had experiences with The Real Real, so that's why I can vouch for them and say that everything that I have received has been guaranteed authentic, the quality, the customer service has been really great, and the prices, in my opinion, and the 
selection, in my opinion, is a lot better than most of these luxury consignment retailers. Another one of my favorite hacks to make sure that you avoid paying retail for luxury items is using a shopping tool such as ShopTagger. Now, if you guys have been following me for a while, you know that I swear by the ShopTagger tool and I literally use it for every time I do any kind of shopping online and I've been using it for years. It's a free app to download. You can download it on your computer and basically it's just like a little widget that pops up on your browser when you are browsing online. You can save items to your shop tagger page and you can also create organized lists of things that you are eyeing. So for example, if you are in the market for a luxury designer item and you're not 100% sure about what you want and you're not sure about the price, you kind of want to contrast and compare between different retailers, you can save as many of these items to your shop tagger page and create kind of like a watch list, if you will. Um, that's what I would do in this kind of a situation. So for example, if I was looking at a Chanel flat bag in a specific size, I would just browse through all of these luxury retailers. If you're gonna be shopping pre-loved, I would browse through all of the pre-loved sites and save all of the medium Chanel flat bags that I am interested in to my shop tagger watch list. And the moment one of them will drop in price, or maybe you added something to your watch list that is currently out of stock and then it comes back into stock, ShopTagger will notify you via email or push notification on mobile the moment it comes back in stock. So you can beat the lineup before anyone else, which is incredible. And one of my personal favorite features about ShopTagger. Another one of my personal favorite features about ShopTagger is that when you get to the checkout page of the retailer that you are shopping at, a pop-up will come up with with coupons. So you can actually apply these coupons to your cart and receive an additional discount at checkout, which I think is incredible. And most recently, they also added a cash back feature. So you can get some cash back every time you shop using the ShopTagger app. So if you guys are interested in checking out ShopTagger and downloading it for free, I'm gonna have a link in my description box down below. I'm also gonna do my best to link any of the items that I'm gonna be mentioning in today's video, whether they are new or pre-loved, I'll be like your personal shopper, if you will, and try to scour the internet for the best prices possible. So if you're interested in checking that out as well, I will link it down below too. All right, so for the first category, this is the under $500 category. Now I'm based in Canada, so I made these categories based on US dollars. So if the prices vary slightly up or down, that's why. So the first item in this category that I included was the Chanel card holder. Now, personally, I own a little Chanel card holder slash wallet, and I purchased this about three years ago, and honestly, it has changed my life because before this I carried one of those large wallets that barely fit into any of my purses and I love how small and compact this one is and for someone like me who doesn't carry cash and carries mostly cards and just a few receipts this wallet does everything and the quality is just amazing. I got it in this beautiful black patent leather with silver hardware combination that I feel is very timeless and classic. And I feel like for the amount of uses I got of it, I definitely got my cost per wear. And this is a small luxury good that also appreciates in value over time, assuming that you keep it in really, really good condition. So if you are in the market for for a brand new wallet and something that you will have and keep basically forever. I cannot recommend a card holder wallet more than this one and specifically Chanel because Chanel is a brand that has proven to appreciate and value over time. The next item I included in this category is a Chanel brooch. Now you're gonna notice a common theme in this video. There is gonna be a lot of mentions of Chanel because Chanel is one of those houses, like I mentioned, appreciates and value. If you are looking 
looking for a luxury investment, Chanel is probably a good place to start. And the reason why I think a Chanel brooch is such a great luxury investment is because first of all, it's one of the lower end in terms of priced pieces that you can get from a luxury brand such as Chanel. But secondly, I kind of like to look at it as a piece of jewelry. It's very wearable, especially if you get it in a very kind of neutral toned down combination, such as the example I'm showing you here. This is a Chanel brooch that I purchased probably three or four years ago, and I have worn it so, so much. It's such a versatile piece. It's like this neutral kind of silvery gold metal with pearls, and it goes with everything. I've worn it on blazers, on sweaters, on t-shirts, on hats. There's literally 101 ways that you can wear a brooch like this. So if you're looking for a kind of smaller luxury designer good you want to invest in, I think that a Chanel brooch is a great option and they also hold their value really well. Another Chanel item that holds its value really, really well and is a timeless classic that you can wear again and again and again are Chanel classic stud earrings. It's another piece that is very coveted. It holds its value really well. So if one day you did decide that you wanted to resell it, you'd probably be able to recoup most of the money that you paid for it. And if you hang on to it long enough, you might even be able to make some money. That's why I included it in this video. And I think it's a great option as a first designer investment piece. Moving on to the $1,500 category, the first designer item I put on this list are a pair of Manolo Blahnik Kangisi pumps. Now I realize that any kind of a shoe investment is not really an investment because the moment you put on a pair of shoes and walk out of the store, those shoes lose value. But there is an exception to a couple of pairs of shoes that I feel are investment pieces because they will never ever go out of style. They are classics and staples in my personal wardrobe that I have reworn again and again and again. And they just amplify any outfit that you wear them with and the Manolo Blahnik Hungisis are just one of them. I purchased my very first pair of Hungisi Manolos when I was getting married, which was almost six years ago. And I got them in this beautiful champagne satin color that I absolutely adore. And they are a perfect neutral that I have worn with so many different looks. I've worn them with one of my wedding dresses. I have worn them with cocktail dresses, with denim, with suits with dresses, skirts, there's so many different ways that you can wear a pair of heels like this. And they are a classic staple in my wardrobe that I will love and cherish probably forever. I love this style so much that a few months ago, I picked up another pair in this beautiful emerald green velvet combination. There are a little bit less wearable in my opinion than the champagne variation that I have, but I feel like in the fall and winter, they are so festive and I just think there's something very, very special about a pair of Hengisi pumps when you put them on your foot. It's like jewelry, but for your feet. The other pair of shoes that I think are worth the investment are a pair of classic Christian Louboutin Pagals. Pagals are the ones that I personally go for. For me, I find that they are the most comfortable. And I also find that a pointy toe shoe is timeless. It's flattering, it elongates the legs, and it's something that will never ever go out of style. So that's why I included the Christian Louboutin Pagals in the under $1,500 category. And this is also considering that you get them in a classic color. I personally own them in a black and a nude and I have worn both to death. I also have them in more funkier combinations, but definitely the black and the nude are hands down probably one of my most worn pair of Christian Louboutin pumps. The last pair of shoes that I wanted to include in this category as a great first investment purchase are a pair of Chanel flats. Now, I recently mentioned in one of my videos that I'm really over the Chanel 
Chanel Ballerina flat. Now that is a flat that has been around forever. It's a classic. If you love that style, I would say go for it. Personally, for me, it feels a little bit outdated. And another thing that kind of turns me off about this style is that it is so easily replicated. When you are spending that much money on a luxury item, you want to feel like it's a special piece. That's just my opinion. Of course, at the end of the day, I always say you have to do whatever it is that makes you happy. So if you love the Chanel Ballerina flat, you do you. I personally prefer the Chanel Slingback flat to the Ballerina flat because I think it is more of like an elevated, modern version of the classic ballet flat. And I love how it looks both in the flat version and also the version with the little block heel. It's another versatile piece that's timeless and will never go out of style and you can wear it with literally everything from denim to skirts, shorts, dresses. I just think it's such an incredible item to have in your wardrobe. Again, I would go for a more neutral tone color so you can get a lot more wear out of it. Learn from my mistake and don't go for a bold color as your first luxury investment piece because it's going to be very, very difficult to style. The next luxury designer investment piece that I think is a great first buy is the classic Hermes H belt. That belt will never go out of style and I think that it really elevates a look. It's another piece that can be versatile if you get it in a neutral color combination. One of the things I love about the H belt is that it's double sided. So on one side you can get more of a neutral tone color and on the other side you can go for more of a bold color if you want to switch things up with your look which I think is incredible and that way you get kind of two belts in one. I know it's super pricey for a belt but I like to look at it as something that can be worn in more ways than just one and it's another item that over time if you keep it in really really good condition will only increase in value. Another Hermes item that will increase in value and that I think is a timeless classic if this is something that you like is the classic classic Hermes, I think it's called the Burn wallet. I used to own one of these and honestly, considering the amount of times I wore it and dropped it on the ground and accidentally stepped on it a couple of times and I putting it in one handbag, putting it in another and in another and another, that wallet went through the ringer and by the end of it all, it was still in such great condition when I decided to sell it. And the reason why I decided to sell it was because it was a little too big for my liking. This is actually the wallet that I had before I got the Chanel card holder wallet that I use now. And I also preferred something that had more of a secure zip on it. The Burn wallet has like a flap closure, which is great if that's something that you personally are looking for out of a wallet. I know a lot of people like easier access, if you will, to their wallets, but I feel like if you are not not a wallet aficionado and you just prefer to carry the minimum, I think the Chanel wallet is a better option. But if you want something a little bit more luxurious and on days where you feel like you need to carry around more, I think the Hermes Burn wallet is a great first investment piece. This is like the longest list out of all of the categories, the under $1,500 category. And the last item on this list that I put down are the Hermes Orange sandals. I had a love-hate relationship with these sandals, if I'm honest. At first, I really disliked them because I feel like they're kind of a little bit too commercial. And this was something I was trying to explain in my previous video when I was talking about luxury items that I was over. At first, I was turned off by them because I thought that they were too commercial and I thought that everybody had them and they just lost their uniqueness. And like I said, when you're spending a lot of money on something you want to feel like it's special in some way. Now, I'm gonna talk about some items in this video that 
are an exception to that rule for me personally, but that's only because the orange sandals, it's something that I like, but it's not something that I love and I have to have and I feel like is going to elevate my wardrobe. But if you're someone that loves the look of the orange sandals and you think that they are going to go with so many different looks in your wardrobe, then I think it's a great investment piece because it's Hermes, it's gonna go up in value, the quality is phenomenal and you really cannot go wrong, especially if you go with with a neutral tone or color like white or brown. It's going to go with so many different looks and outfits in your wardrobe, but you also want to consider the climate that you live in here in Canada. We have a very few months out of the year, probably four, maximum five months out of the year that we actually have weather is appropriate enough to wear such a sandal. But if you live in a climate like Miami where you can wear a sandal like this all year round, then this is probably a much, much better investment piece for you than it would be for me. So that's just another thing that I wanted to put out there for you to consider if you were thinking about investing in the Hermes orange sandal. All right, the next is the under $3,000 category. And the first item that I put in this category is a classic Burberry trench coat. Now, this is another piece that I personally think is a little bit too commercial at this point. I feel like a lot of people own this Burberry trench coat and it's kind of lost its it factor for me, if you will. So I recently got a Burberry trench coat. I believe it was last year when I got it, but instead of buying it retail, I ended up going through the pre-loved market and got it at one of my local consignment shops. And I got such a beautiful trench coat. It's a vintage trench coat and I love it so much. It looks and feels amazing every time I wear it. And I paid a fraction of the cost. If my memory serves me right, I'm pretty sure I paid only $300 for it. And this is like $2,000 ish trench coat if you were to buy it brand new through a Burberry store. So that's just an example of how you can find luxury designer pieces that are considered investment pieces at a much, much lower price point. You just have to be patient and really do your homework. Now there are certain pieces that I think are sometimes worth paying retail for and sometimes they're not. And I feel like with a Burberry trench coat, that's one of those pieces that always decreases in value so it makes a lot more sense to purchase this kind of a piece through a pre-loved retailer. Another item that I think is a great first luxury investment piece that's under $3,000 is a Max Mara coat. This is another classic and timeless staple that I think will be around for years and years. And I'm not just talking about the Max Mara teddy coats because that specific coat is a little bit more on the trendy side. And honestly, I don't know how much longer it's going to be in style for, but Max Mara is known for creating these beautifully structured, well-made coats that are timeless classics and basics that I think everyone needs in their wardrobe, especially if you live in a climate where you have the four seasons. In fall and winter, I really depend on my coats to not only keep me warm, but to elevate my look. So I definitely think that investing in a good luxury coat is a great idea. All right, the next category is the under $6,000 category. And the first item that I put into this category is a classic Chanel flat bag. Now, I do want to put a disclaimer out there that Chanel recently increased their prices and there are a ton of different Chanel classic flap options because they come in all different shapes and sizes. But if you are in the market for a medium Chanel flat bag, I'm pretty sure that it's around the $6,000 US price point. If you're in Canada, that's a little bit of a different story, but if you're in the US or if you're paying US prices, then you can probably get a medium size Chanel classic flap at that price point if you are buying retail, of course. Now, I personally own several classic Chanel flap bags. I used to own a jumbo, but that one I ended up selling because I just 
felt like the jumbo was that very awkward in between size. It wasn't like oversized to the point where it looked and felt like kind of cool and trendy. That probably doesn't make any sense at all. But it also wasn't a size that was like kind of small and compact enough that I could fit all of my essentials in that could be dressed up and down. You know what I mean? So I feel like the maxi is a great kind of casual but also elevated casual flat bag and that's exactly what i use mine for i purchased my maxi flat bag several months ago actually almost a year ago i would say i bought it when i was still pregnant with ari and my logic behind buying the maxi was that i would be able to fit all of my essentials in it plus all of my baby's essentials in it if i just needed to grab one bag and go and that's exactly what i've been using it for now obviously i haven't left the house in a very long time so it's been a while since I have used it but when I was using it that's what I used it for and I did also purchase my classic flap bag in the maxi size pre-loved there's a local boutique here in Toronto called Hot Classics where I buy a lot of my luxury handbags from and honestly in my personal opinion and experience from purchasing different luxury designer items from various luxury consigners in my city. I think Hope Classics has the best selection of luxury handbags at the best prices. That is just my opinion. I'm not paid or being sponsored to say any of this. That is just my personal experience. And I hands down have the most luxury designer goods from Haute Classics. So having said that, I purchased my maxi from them and it's a vintage maxi. So it still has the single flap. And honestly, I prefer the single flap on the maxi because it's less structured. I also got it in the lambskin with the silver hardware. And I love the lambskin because it's soft and buttery and especially when it's a single flap it has more of this kind of dressed down elevated but casual vibe to it it's just a really cool chic trendy mom bag and that's what i love about it so much and this particular handbag can also be worn crossbody which i really appreciate on days where i just need to go hands free and all in all i'm just so in love with this handbag and i also have an organizational little pouch that i put at the bottom of the handbag Handbag. Not only does this kind of help the bottom of the handbag keep its shape and it allows it to stand I put it on a tabletop for example, but it also makes sure that all of my Essentials anything that I keep in my handbag kind of have their own little place and everything stays organized So I love that but and if my memory serves me right it was well below the six thousand dollar mark because I went through the pre-loved market I also have a few classic flap Chanel handbags bags in the medium size and these ones I love to use a more of like a daily kind of outing where I wouldn't require a lot of things I love them because they can be dressed up they can be dressed down I have mine in a black and a beige I also have this white kind of weaved material that I really love but again that one is more of a summery bag so if you're in the market for a medium classic flap around the five or six thousand dollar mark i think if you get it in a classic beige or a classic black it's a great first investment piece if it is your first investment piece i would advise going with the caviar leather just because it is supposed to be more resilient to scratches and damage but you know what i've after having my lambskin maxi and seeing the amount of times that i've worn it it's honestly really holding up and barely has any scratches on it so it really just depends what it is you are looking for and the vibe that you are going for but yeah i think that you really cannot go wrong with a classic flap another item in the under six thousand dollar category that can also range in price but if you're going to go with the most basic basic version i would say the cartier love bracelet or love collection in general now if you go with the basic obviously it's going to be less than six thousand dollars but if you are going to get to the variations with diamonds and all of these bells and whistles and obviously it's going to be a lot more but this is another piece that has been around for 
forever and will probably be around forever and it's a classic timeless staple and if you are a jewelry lover and you specifically are looking for a first luxury investment jewelry piece i think that cartier is a great place to start another jewelry brand that i think is timeless and classic and you really cannot go wrong if you invest in your first piece from this brand is van cleef and arpels i personally think that their pieces are stunning especially their clothes Clover bracelets and clover necklaces. I think they are just so beautiful, so classic. It is a little bit commercial, but again, it's something that I love and I would personally invest in if jewelry was something that I really put a high value on. But I'm more of like a handbag and shoes kind of gal. So for me, jewelry has always kind of taken like the back burner, but I know there are a lot of you who are into jewelry and consider jewelry to be great investment pieces. And you have the idea of saving them as heirlooms to pass on to future generations. So that's why I wanted to include this brand in this category. If you are looking for a first time luxury investment piece. All right, and the last category is the under $10,000 category. And this is another kind of jewelry piece. I would say it's more of a time piece. Well, it is a time piece, but it also varies in price depending on what you are looking at. The item that I included in this category is a Rolex. And Rolex is a brand that is also timeless. It's been around for ages and so many people love this brand and are loyal to this brand and are super happy, not only with the customer service, but with the quality of the time pieces. And it's something that, again, you can hand down to future generations. I'm personally not a watch wearer or watch lover. This is actually like the first time I'm wearing a watch in a video in a very, very long time. But this is a vintage Omega watch that my grandmother handed down to me. So this just goes to show that watches are amazing heirlooms and this watch because it was handed down to me from my grandmother has a lot of sentimental meaning to me. And that's personally for me when it comes to jewelry is the most important thing. I don't value jewelry so much for its worth or what it's made out of. I used to be in the jewelry business many, many years ago. So I know jewelry is true worth. So maybe that's why I have a different perspective on the whole jewelry business. But for me, the most important thing about jewelry is its sentimental value. So I love and cherish this watch even though it's very very beat up because my grandmother wore it and I will never ever get rid of it because of that so like I said if you are in the market for a luxury designer watch and you're looking for something within the $10,000 budget I think Rolex is a great place to start because they have watches ranging from I believe it's like $8,000 and they can go upwards of 20 30 40 thousand dollars really depending on how many bells and whistles you want on it. All right, you guys, so that wraps up today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it and hopefully you found this helpful. I really enjoyed making this video and I would love to know if you have any first luxury designer memories of making your first purchase and how was that? And do you regret it? Do you not regret it? Do you still have that luxury item? I would love to read about your stories. I always find those stories so unique and interesting and fascinating fascinating and I think it's great to share our experiences because we can all learn from past mistakes and hopefully you guys will learn from me sharing my personal mistake with my first luxury purchase. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out with me. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe and I cannot wait to see you guys in my next video.